Good morning, or afternoon, or whenever it is that you're watching this. It's morning for me, and hello from my shadow. Great lighting. Getting ready to film a video. We gotta get things cleaned up, set up. I don't have a bowl to put these nice rocks in, so they're gonna go sit in the seashell for now. That's kind of pretty, even with this washed out sideways lighting. These are called Amazonites. As an Amazonon. Amazonon? No, Amazon plus night. Have this leftover tablecloth from the party. It's not actually a tablecloth, just a piece of fabric. I'm gonna use that to cover this up. I've been using this cooler from the party as my little set to record on. It's working out very, very well. I'm very pleased with it. Lighting is very difficult this time of year. The sun is so low that it comes through at an angle, so pretty much no matter where you go, there's shadows you have to deal with. Uh, so I got those string of pearls pulled out, the Senecios, and replaced them with the pansies. It doesn't look amazing, but when there's nothing else outside this winter, I'm going to be very happy I did it. Went ahead and repotted those into a hanging basket along with my epiphyllum. Just been a fun day of repotting stuff. And now we're going to go run some errands, right Toby? This is why I couldn't find Halloween stuff. Because everybody's already taken it down and clearanced it out and set up for Christmas. Alright, these things are pretty cool though. You put them on and then lights turn into Santa Claus heads. You see it? You see the Santa Claus heads? Let's try another one. Alright, this one's supposed to do snowmen. Oh, oh, that's cute. Look at that. Magic. He's hungry. I actually need to come over here. I have this hibiscus potted in one of these sideways pots, which I know is not the most attractive thing. But I do that so that the tortoise can come over here and snack on it. But you know what? Uh, she never does, so I usually have to snap leaves off of myself and gather flowers. None of these. I don't know if she'll eat flowers that aren't open yet. No? Nothing here? Do I have any hibiscus flowers? Ah, there they are. I was going to say that would be very unusual for me to not have any flowers out here. I mean... I have like 10, 15 different hibiscus plants, probably more than that. You can graze, you gonna graze? No, you're warming up, it's not that hot out today. So one of the reasons I went to Lowe's yesterday is because I needed a larger diamond bit. The diamond bits are what I use, or what everybody uses, to drill holes in the bottoms of ceramic pottery. So this is the biggest one I could find, it's one and three eighths inch. The only problem is, it just has a threaded hole in the bottom. What do I... What am I supposed to do with that? Is there some type of adapter it goes on to? Is it made for like a table saw? Perhaps? I don't, I don't, that, I don't know what to do with this. But I need this to drill a bigger hole in that, but that is a project for another day because today I have something much more pressing to get to. Now, as some of you may know, I live in zone six and uh, some of my palm trees are too big to get into the house, like this Alexander palm. This is not gonna fit in the house. It's you can see it's gotten it's gotten pretty big like really 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 big so uh, I have a company there's a company here in st. Louis that grabs your palms I'm also sending the fox shell palm uh, they come out pick them up and they store them in this large warehouse with like a translucent roof and keep them live for you during the winter and bring them back to you when they outgrow your space they do this for like office scapes and all different types of things and whatnot it's it's a bit much, I know, but I'm I'm a gardener and I'm attached to my plants. I can't just get rid of them when they get too big and the service is here, so I have to use it. And that's also why I'm able to have this 30 foot tall queen palm that blew over. But there it is. You see it? Yeah. So they have to come out here with a crane and pick these guys up. They'll be here tomorrow. I'm sending five plants out to them. This big queen palm. That large Alexander palm, kind of the one we were just talking about. I'm sending them this Robolini, so I need to get this dug up. I could keep the Robolini myself, but I'd rather use the space to try and overwinter these Adenidia palms. And then the uh, foxtail palm, and then I also have this triple trunked Adenidia here that's going to them as well. Adenidias are particularly tricky for me to keep alive. 
uh, not outdoors, but indoors. They need more heat than I can normally give them in my grow space. So, but I, I have a plan this year. I'm going to try something different. And uh, these two down here, I know they don't look small, but they're actually in small pots inside of large pots. So those, I'm going to give a, give it a shot and see, see how they do this year. But so basically what, <laughs> what I'm getting at is I need to unbury this, pull it out. I need to dig up that robolini, the Phoenix robolini, the pygmy date palm. I need, I basically just need to get all the palm trees that are being picked up for storage. I need to get those ready. So I'm going to do that now. Oh, where'd you come, butterfly? All right, got that pulled out. And now that that's done, I just need to go in here and pretty much cut everything out of the bottom, trim it down and, you know, get it ready to go. All right, so I've got the heliconias cut back, got everything pulled out. I pulled out that black coral calicaja that was in here because, uh, you know, they don't guarantee the plants you have planted around the pot to survive. So if I really like them, I try and save them. This guy back here, though, this variegated alocasia, uh, it's really rooted in there. It's been in there for years. It's, it's a trooper, and it is an absolutely beautiful plant. Oh, and I need to get those plastic coconuts off. The problem here is that the crown of the plant, the canopy, it's taller than my clearance over here from this magnolia. Now I have a dolly. This is one of those fun adjustable ones. It's really nifty. Not sure if I can do it with one hand. We will see. Just pull that. Do all that stuff and... Boom. Here we go. I'm not certain if that lip's going to be big enough. Weight-wise, should be okay. Uh, if not, then I'll just scoot it it's only like you know 15 or 20 feet tall i can manage yeah that's that's not happening no big deal i can slide it need to get out of the way bud all right gotta start sliding this again is this as fun for you as it is for me surprisingly however not as heavy as you would think it would be considering how big it is I really hope the camera caught that. All right, feeling much safer now. This is the wrong direction. I just love how somebody who doesn't usually have their face on camera finally does it at the worst possible angle, where gravity is working against everything. Do some workout. Look, I should flip the camera. There we go. Whew. Good workout. Love that feeling. And then I get to dig this guy up. I might save that for last, actually, because that's going to be really dirty. I'm going to go gather the smaller bombs now. Through nicely. I'm going to miss you guys. All right. Now for the Robolini. Uh, the soil over here is very sandy, so I should be able to just kind of pull this out. I might even get away with only having to pull out this one croton and that, uh, this other guy. What are you? What are you? I can't see your flowers. I don't need to see the flowers. I'm a pro. What are you? Ugh. Roselia? I think it's a Roselia. Whew. Did it. Down. Look at that. Just gotta, you know, pull it out of there. Done. One, two, three, four. Five, the one that fell over. This Robolini palm, when it's out of the ground, that thing's grown a lot. I'm actually pretty glad I'm sending it to storage because the canopy on this is going to take up so much space. Feels good to have that done, I must say. My neighbor seems to be on a non-stop mission with his leaf blower today, so I'm probably going to stop for now. I'm going to edit a video and pick up tomorrow when they pick up the palm trees. Good morning to you, too. Look at that big, sexy flower. I'm pretty sure every time this puts out a new flower, it ends up in the vlog. But it's because it's just so pretty. It is the next day. It is tomorrow. Not gonna lie. 
Yesterday's a little bit fuzzy and blurry from that coconut hit me on the head. Guess I'll have to wear a helmet next time I do that. And before the comments start rolling in about that situation, that is actually a plastic bundle of coconuts that I had up there in the Alexander Palm. Alexander Palms don't grow coconuts. Only coconut palms grow coconuts. But I uh, can't keep coconut palms here. I really can't keep any palms here reliably. But uh, they don't, coconut palms don't overwinter well. So they're not really a plant you can keep for very many years if you don't live someplace where you can grow them in the ground. So this is that cluster. And see it's all one piece. Well, one of them broke off, which shouldn't have happened. And I had this tied up in there. It was tied in the canopy, but uh, one of them broke off. wasn't wasn't supposed to do that. Oh well. Next year I'll remember to wear a helmet. And the good news, I can't remember if I said this or not, but because the company that stores these palm trees has to bring a crane out to pick the queen palm, the big guy working at its butt right now. They have to bring the crane out to pick it back up. We're going to go ahead and store it one last winter, they said. So, uh, all is not lost there, and it's okay. Won't have to worry about trying to figure out how to keep it alive during the winter time until next year. So today, uh, I need to go to the hardware store and get someone to help me and teach me how I'm supposed to attach this thing to my drill. I think I need a shank to put in there to make it fit. So going to do that so that I can go ahead and set this back up into a fountain. Got some blooms here looking nice. This is a Neo Phoenicia or Asco Phoenicia cross. Yes. Asco Phoenicia twinkle to cross with, I can't read that. You see the tag, sun's in my eyes. Another orchid I need to repot. I potted this in this like wall container a few years ago well like two years ago and it doesn't like the bark it's just been pushing the bark out instead of growing through it so i need to at least go ahead and get it sit sitting properly and i'm talking is hard today and get a different bark in there it's probably some pine bark yeah, but i'll be doing that later because i ran out of bark i have this the miracle grow bark which i actually really like the Miracle Grow uh, potting mix, the orchid mix. It's I don't know why they call it a mix because it's literally, it's just bark. There's nothing else in it. But I like it for amending my soil. I don't necessarily like it for my orchids so much because it used to be really nice chunks, and now you can see there's all kinds of like just dirt in there. So I, I would really prefer to use like orchiata or like a nice. A higher quality pine bark mix that's not really so messy. Uh, might be giving the river rock stuff a shot, but not now. That'll be waiting until springtime. This is going to go to the hardware store, get a shank. And I also need to get some palm fertilizer to stick in the pots of the palms. I, I like to go ahead and give them a fresh thing of fertilizer just to help them get through the winter while they're in storage. because. I can't do anything with them that whole time, that, you know, six months, five, six months that they're gone, they're in someone else's hands. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna go run some errands. Now that is a cute Japanese maple. Fire glow. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What? No. How cool is that? Oh, that's so neat. Uh, <laughs> no. This is what I got from Home Depot. I couldn't find anybody to help me, but it looks like this is probably the right attachment. It has a couple little nubs in there, and there's also a couple little female ends in that diamond bit. This piece in the middle, though, hopefully that comes out. It says pull to release, and I hope that means that the bit comes out, because I don't need that for drilling ceramics. Uh, it doesn't look like it comes out, even though on the packaging it said that it fits different size drill bits. So you'd think that would mean it would come out, but I don't know, I've been messing with it. It's not coming out, but uh, I got it pulled down. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, sorry. should actually probably just go find my tripod. Yeah, so I guess that's how I attach it. See, this piece is threaded and then it has these two holes in here. Those two holes should line up 
with that piece right there. Pull this down, probably not gonna happen with one. I'm gonna go get my tripod. Okay, that's better, got the tripod. Full release, you just do this, and that brings it down so that this piece can screw on there, and then you push it up, line these up. Makes sense. I thought pull to release meant that the drill bit would come out, because the package said you could change the drill bit. See, it says, for use with quarter inch pilot bits, para ser usar, that's not important right now. So I, I guess it doesn't say I can change them. I just, I assume that that's what this meant. Well, okay, you know what? For this application, what I'm doing right now, the drill bit is okay in the end, but it's not going to work out for other types of ceramic drilling because that's just going to crack whatever I'm trying to drill. Can't screw this in all the way or else it doesn't line up right. I'm just, boom. But yeah, see how this sticks up? That's a pilot bit. It makes sense. But for ceramics and glass cutting and whatnot, I don't want that there. That's just going to end up breaking what I'm working on. So I'm going to figure something out later, but for now, that that's going to work out okay. It's going to go ahead, just using an 18 volt drill here, this locked in. And here I have my little ceramic drilling station set up. So this is why this doesn't actually matter because I'm just trying to make this drainage hole bigger. That drainage hole is way too small uh, and I'm going to be using this as a fountain. I need to be able to run bigger tubing through there. I like the water running through it because it helps clear the debris out faster. And I've never used this particular bit before so we will see how well it works. That worked out really well. Nice clean cut. I really like this bit. This is probably the best diamond bit I've ever used. There are some downsides, like how the hell do I get the chunk out? That was a nice clean cut. Not only was it a clean cut, it was a quick cut. I really like that. All right, so here I've got my hose. This is, I think, one and a quarter. I think it's just one inch uh, ID inter-diameter tubing. A little bit large for siliconing, but I could stuff some stuff in there to slow the backflow. So I've gone ahead and just rigged it together real quick so I want to see how much backflow there is. That's a hefty amount of backflow, so I do need to stuff something in that hole. Kind of done, at least done for now. I would prefer to fill the pot with stones or create a false bottom at the top and put stones in the top, but I don't have an excess of gravel laying around. So for right now, this is going to have to do. I was just kind of tossing this together to make sure the mechanisms work right. I'll probably actually be waiting until spring to really try and make this look super nice. But for now, I just put this piece of flagstone on top to cover up all the tubing and stuff that's in there. Get set a flower pot or something on there. Yeah, that'll do for now. Good enough for me. Now that that's, for lack of a better word, done, I've been watching the forecast and it looks like it's going to start getting cold next week. There's a low of 38 and the other lows are going to be in the 40s but that one night of 38 has me nervous so it's time to go ahead and start pulling things from the large planters that I want to overwinter. Mainly these heliconias that are in here. Kind of let me find ones in the sun. So and you can see with the way this angle of the sun's changed everything's reaching so this all needs to be cleaned up anyway. They're hard to come by so I want to take care of them and protect them. The elephant ears I'm going to just let them go but I dug one up. I have this one that I dug up has lots of little plants in it. I'm gonna pot that one up and save that one because it has enough plants in it that I can start a whole bunch. So that's going to be okay. The problem though is I need to use an organic potting mix. I have a bag of it but it's trapped. So you see it? It's under there. It's under the palm trees but I might be able to get it out. I'm not gonna try it. It seems dangerous. But the people are supposed to be here not too terribly long sometime today to pick these guys up. They're picking up this one with the crane. I think I already talked about all of this. I went ahead and I fertilized all of these, a very heavy slow release, kind of slow release, more of a soil amendment fertilizer, the Espoma palm tone. For now, I just want to make sure they're sent off with the best possible, what, what am I trying to say? Forget it. You guys are smart. Use your, your own powers of inference to piece that one together. So yeah, I can't yeah, I can't get things repotted until I go ahead and get that potty mix out from under the palm tree, so I have to wait for them. Now I do have an extra bag of miracle growth stored back here, but I really need to go organic because I'm going to be placing these in a manner where they're going to be over my aquaponics tub, like underneath my hand's aquaponics tub, and there's going to be a shelf with holes in it so I can water them with that aquaponics water and it can go back in 
So organic would be best because there's it's aquaponics, there's live fish in that water. So I'm just going to be patient and wait a little bit. I'd like to get going on this. So in the meantime, I picked up this bag of Fertilome Orchid Bark. I've never used it before. It's a little bit pricey. The bag's not resealable, which I think is kind of dumb, for especially for $9. That's pretty stupid. I prefer Orchiata or the mix from SVO from Sunset Valley Orchids. Man, they have an excellent bark blend. I love their bark blend. But uh, I only have to repot a few things, so I'm just going with this. I think I mentioned earlier about uh, using the river pebbles, which I do plan on doing in the springtime with my repots, but this time of year, I'm just sticking with the bark because things in my grow space during the wintertime aren't always the most ideal conditions, so I don't want to change anything up just yet. I'm not, I'm not looking to experiment right now, but it's been fun watching everybody else do it, and it seems to be working wonderfully. That and my local nurseries really don't have any nice rock left this time of year to choose from. They just have like paver base, which I would rather not use because, you know, it's dirty. So let's go ahead and cut this open. Upon first glance, I see bark, I see charcoal, and lava. Not too bad. I also feel like I might see a chunk of peat in there. Let's see. Dump a little bit out. What is that? thought maybe it was phagum, but this is not... Them. It just looks like, this just looks like dead plant material to me. So uh, that's not something I would want in my mix. The bark itself is nice. It's hard. It's dense. There's a lot of this peat stuff in here though. I like the lava. The charcoal's kind of thin and useless. I'm not totally certain how I feel about this mix. I like it better than the Miracle Grow mix. Than the Miracle? Than the Miracle Grow mix. I like this better than the Miracle Grow mix because the miracle Grow mix is really just mulch. It's just dirty mulch. Great for amending your soil. Oh, this might be okay. I like the bark better in this than in the uh, Better Grow bag. Let me go grab the Better Grow and look at that one. All right, so here are the other two. This is their Phalaenopsis blend, which I think the main difference is that it has chunky peat in it. I don't like it. There's also, I'm just now noticing there's some sticks in here. These actually look like they might just be dead roots in this mix. What's that all about? I almost really liked this stuff, but uh, at the same time, as long as they're hard all the way through and they're not going to decay, this feels kind of soft to me though. I feel like these are going to decay very quickly. So these are pretty much the same thing, but the Phalaenopsis blends has the peat in it to help retain moisture. So one thing I like to note, resealable bags. I love that. I like it okay. It just, it, I've noticed that it decays a little bit quickly, and I think that that's because though there are some nice chunks of bark in here, there's also this really flimsy, crappy stuff in here that is going to decay quickly, which can cause rot. You don't want that. It's one of the nice things with the Orchiatas. It's nice, hard chunks that don't decay as fast. And this is also, you'll notice, this is very dirty compared to this. And that's really, I think it's just the peat. Uh, they're, the peat they have in this is just messier, so I suppose I like better how this is chunked together in this mix. Because you can see right here, this is just their regular special orchid potting mix. Doesn't have the peat in it, and it's pretty clean. But again, it still has these thin, wispy pieces of what are basically just pine bark mulch. Which is okay. Like I said, I've used both of these for many years, and they've worked well. But I do notice that I pretty much end up repotting just about every single year, as opposed to every two years, because, well, things get a little bit funky. And I think that that's because they have, this is, this is coconut core. Okay, well, it doesn't say anything in, on the bag about that being in there, but that's what this is. Okay, so there's a not so in-depth look at these orchid barks. I mostly just kind of, I was curious about the fertile loam. I wanted to compare it. Looks fine. I like that it has the lava stone in it. That's something I really like about it. So I'm going to give this a try and see how I like it. And then in the springtime with the, my repots in the spring, I'll be using the river pebbles. Got off the phone with the palm tree company and they said they're on their way. So I went ahead and put on real clothes because I kind of looked like a toe since I'm gonna have to actually see other humans. And yeah, just waiting for them now.
All done finally. They uh, tied the Alexander palm up wrong and it fell. Didn't fall very far, but uh, left a bit of a mess there. I thought they might clean up. But they didn't. They're normally really good about picking up after themselves, so it's a little bit unusual. Knocked over this windmill palm and just left it. Which is also unusual for them. Can I do this with one hand? There we go. <sighs> yeah, so that's where that was. That actually kind of makes things a little bit easier for me because I was touring because I didn't have cash to tip them with. Though, I usually only tip them if they're here for a long time and end up helping me with something. I kind of did most of the work for them. Not really. I mean, they had to do a lot of work, but I moved all the plants in one section. If they had to go through and pull everything themselves and get all the understory plants pulled out and whatnot, then that would be different. But they also left without telling me, so don't have to worry about tipping them. That's okay. Now I can get to my potting mix. It's cleaned off so I can get it dirty again. Turns out I had a bag of this potting mix in my garage, so I could have sworn I had two of them. I thought, well, maybe I used one. It's, it's... <sighs> so I was waiting on that for nothing. I need to change these shoes. I swore I wouldn't wear them while I'm doing yard work. Uh, I can't find my big green bucket. Does anybody, do you guys know where it is? Where's my big green bucket? I swear I just saw it. Where is my bucket? Did my tomatoes eat my bucket? No. Got some nice looking tomatoes in here. Ooh. Yeah. I need to pull that one. Seriously, where is it? Has anybody seen my bucket? Do you know where it is? Toby, where's my bucket? It's hiding. Found it. Finally. So, what I'm doing here is I'm gonna mix up a nice, well-drained soil. A nice mix for those helicopters. Now, one thing about this organic potting mix is it does seem to hold quite a bit of moisture. This bag has been in my garage for a couple months and it's it's damp. And that's slightly concerning because heliconias, those rhizomes, rot very easily. So I'm going to add sand. I'm adding a lot of sand. Like, a lot. There. Lots of sand. I'd rather have to just water these guys like crazy than risk them rotting out. So I'm getting that sand, there's already some sand in there, I'm putting some more in there. And then, that miracle Grow orchid bark. Putting a bunch of that in there too. Lastly, some charcoal. Ugh, this is why these bags should be resealable. That sucks. And then, you know, that's the obvious part. Mix it together until it's even all the way through. And over here in my pot, I've put in about an inch of hydrostone. I'm going to add a layer of charcoal carbon on top of that, and I'm going to give it a quick rinse, too. So the reason I'm putting all this down here is because I want to make sure that should any water somehow build up in the bottom of this, that it has something, a barrier between the rhizome and the roots and everything. I like the hydrostone. This may end up on a heating pad, so I'm actually probably not gonna fill it up all the way. I'm gonna fill it kind of low because those heating pads, 
they can only warm, you know, a few inches of soil. So I'm not going to plant this. I'm not going to fill this all the way up. And the charcoal helps keep the water clean should it back up. But there's, this is a pretty hefty draining mix that shouldn't be an issue. But I mean, if you haven't noticed, the theme here with overwintering the heliconias is good drainage. And this stuff is going to drain like insanity. So that should be just fine. It's also going to retain some moisture because I think there's peat in here. There, it looks like there's coconut core and um, sand. Sand holds moisture too. So should be fine. I've gone ahead and pulled up the heliconias that I'm transplanting. There's, uh, you can see there's some cleaning up to do in here. Possibly some rot on some of the rhizomes. So it's probably good timing them getting this done now. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a very thin layer to the pot, maybe a couple inches. Now this clump is pretty good to go ahead and just get in here. I don't think I have to worry too much about it. Getting these guys to all stand up the same direction, kind of a nightmare. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. And also, this is the line right here. See where that white fades into the plant? That's where I want the soil to be. So that's kind of the trick. And that's a little bit deeper in the pot than I wanted it to be. I think it'll be okay. Okay, so you can see here at the end of this rhizome, see, it's kind of pliable and mushy. So uh, that's got to go. I don't want anything in this pot that's going to rot. This still has some color in it, though I'm not really crazy about the color. I would prefer for it to be a little bit more white. Okay, I kept cutting at that one. It still wasn't looking great. And this color doesn't necessarily mean dead, but it should be whiter. All right, I'm still not crazy about that. It's not rotten. Uh, but it does have a slight smell to it, so I'm going to be putting this with some of my other smaller pieces that are going to go in a smaller pot. Now that that's all done, I've gone ahead, my, someone else is using my watering can right now. I filled this with water from my aquaponics tub because it has a lower pH and the water is much softer, which tropical plants prefer things more on the acidic side, generally. And I am out of the Espoma Biotone starter that you mix in, so I'm just going to go ahead and use the liquid one. The dosing on this is really easy. I have to remember how to do it, though. I think you just tilt it, let some of it run into the, like that, and then you just, nope, that's not it. Well, it's fine. We're just eyeballing this for now. It's not an orchid. It should be okay. And watering it in. Let's see how quick that goes down. Good. That's what I wanted to see. It also helped move the soil around, so I know I need to add more soil. Also, it would really make much more sense to water this in and then fertilize it so that your fertilizer doesn't just flush right out of the pot. Water it in first. That's, that's what I should have done. Okay, yeah, this is draining. That's about how fast I want to see it drain. Going down pretty fast, but not so fast that nobody's going to get any water. I don't know if you've ever tried to overwinter heliconias, but there is kind of an art to it it seems depending on the variety that is some years it works out great for me some years not so much all right i went ahead and i got this one pot up into a much smaller pot so hopefully i can get these rooted and taking off also and this is trash it does have a new growth on it but it's attached to a rotting rhizome so nope not messing with you guys the key really is to keep them watered and keep them from rotting I've already moved my other one to the part shade, really more part sun. I'm going to make sure that these stay well watered. I'll let them dry out a smidge between, but since these are plants I'm trying to get to get rooted, I don't want them in the blazing sun, that's for sure. And temperatures above 75, preferably. Heliconias do not like cool temperatures. There are varieties that can handle it, but this is just a Citricorum, Parrot's Beak Heliconia. They don't like cool temperatures, so when the nighttime temperatures here start dropping below 45 consistently, I'm going to move these in. This is where I'm going to end things. I feel like I've talked a lot about a lot of random things this week. I'm not sure. But, you know, I just don't want this to be too excessively long. I do also plan on using this mix to transplant some bonsais here in the next week or so, so that'll be... Coming up next week, next week is going to be a lot of transplanting things and getting ready for moving them into my garage, into my grow space, actually. I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Really helps me out a ton, and I very much appreciate it. Comment down below. I love talking to y'all. Let me know what's been going on in your garden this week. And as always, keep on growing, everybody. Bye-bye.